Hey people, welcome to the opening episode of Design Talks channel. Here we're gonna have videos about everything related to product design and digital products overall. I'm Bahan, I work as a designer for more than 10 years. So I decided to record my very first video about quite important topic, which is font licensing. What I notice, a lot of people have very little idea what they are, how they work and what you can expect from them. Yeah, yeah, I know they may seem too long and boring to read, but still you have to figure it out to not get in trouble, okay? I'll do my best to explain them as easy as possible, so let's get started. Let's start with defining what is font and how it's different from typeface. Okay, typeface, for example, Helvetica, is a set of glyphs connecting to each other with a unique consistent design, while font, for example, Helvetica regular.otf, is a digital file which informs display or printer how exact character is supposed to be shown. As any software, font is protected by its license. There are many, so to make it a little easier, I decided to group all phones into three main categories according to their licenses. The first one are the good old free phones. The second one are commercial phones, or the phones we have to buy. And the third one, I call them partly free phones. They're the most troublemakers, so you have to definitely learn about them. Now let's dive into each of them. So, free phones are very easy. You can do pretty much everything with them. Download, install it on your computer, use for any purpose, commercial or not commercial, for any sort of project, like it can be web design, brand design, or app design, etc., etc. But still, there's a one important thing you have to consider. Actually, not all phones that you are able to download without paying any money are really free. Let's say some immoral websites are suggesting you to download some stolen commercial phones, which is illegal. So if you are not sure, what you have to do is to go and check the font license. Doing it is not very hard. Just simply type that font's name in search engine, write font license near it, and only if you find out that that font run under the open font license or Apache free software license, only then you can start using it. Otherwise, I won't tell anyone, delete that stolen font as well. To avoid that kind of confusion, what I would suggest is to download them only from well-known trusted resources, such as Google phones, for example. They have a huge library of more than thousands and all of them run under the open phone license. A little Roboto runs under the Apache, but that's no matter. Open phone license doesn't have any usage limitations, but still it has some restrictions related to editing it. Yeah, editing them is legal, but you cannot give that new edited phone completely new name. Let's say your name is Jenny and you've made your own version of Roboto, for instance. So you cannot name it something like Jenny Sans. Instead, call it something like Roboto Jenny, Roboto J, etc. Plus, you cannot sell that Roboto Jenny to anyone because you still are not the author of the phone, you are just an editor, so that's it. If you meet any edited version of free phone, there ain't no need to contact the author or editor, ask for permission. If the source phone is free, then any edited version comes free for you too. That's easy. Yeah, that's very cool that we have free phones, but as any freebie, the vast majority of them are not even made by professionals, and as a result, they don't have enough high quality. Even the ones who have are so few and used so frequently that it's barely impossible to stay original with using them. So that's it. If you really need an original and high quality phone, you have to go and pay for it. And still a lot of people are getting in trouble because they mistakenly suppose that buying a phone is pretty much the same as buying a car. Right? You pay for a car, it becomes your property, you can do pretty much what you want with it, right? Like uh, resell it, give it someone else as a birthday gift, or park at your garage and never even ride it. Phone is very different. As any software, as any digital product, it still remains the intellectual property of designer or type foundry who produced it. And what you do is you go and pay for your own copy of license, which will let you legally use that phone in certain places for certain purposes. Okay, enough of this uh, definition stuff. Let's go and try to buy a phone so you'll see what I mean. 
Here we are at myphones.com. I personally prefer to buy phones here, although you can do it directly from Thai Foundry website as well. So let's try to buy one of the best sellers, Gilroy, a typeface created by Bulgarian designer Rodimir Tinkov. Uh, by the way, it's one of my favorite. I use it on my channel graphics and on my personal website. So we see the price is $25 and a lot of people think that they pay it down on the phone and they can do pretty much everything with the phone. But note this, the sign says from $25. Let's click buying choices and boom. As you see, one phone, which is Gilroy Thin, has six different licenses. I'm gonna briefly explain these three because they are the most frequently used. And if you wanna learn about the rest, just simply click on this blue link. So desktop license, it first of all lets us download and install the phone on our computer. Let's check it allowed uses. You may use the licensed phones to create images on any surface such as computers, screens, paper, web pages, photographs, movie credits, printed material, t-shirts and other surfaces where the images is a fixed size. That means I'm using Gilroy legally on my YouTube channel. All right, what if I want to have it on my website? Some people are like downloading ODF and TDF and converting it to WOLF. Don't do it, people. It's illegal. To do it right, we have to click this web phone license too. And you see the price with a small discount is now 37. So desktop licenses are charged by the number of computers you're going to install it and web phone license by the page views per month. Okay. If you, for example, bought it first for one user and now you hired like two more designers, no need to come and buy a new license. You can simply update it and that's it. If we want to use it on our app, we have to check this app license. And as you see, the price is 250. It's quite expensive license. So small piece of advice. You know, sometimes even very cool phones are not fairly hinted for small and bad quality displays. So before you make that decision to buy an app license, which by the way, as you see, is quite expensive even for a company, I highly recommend you test it several times, okay? Who knows, maybe it's the right decision to move forward with system phones. Okay, now we know which phones are free and how to buy the ones who are not. Now let's move forward and talk about partly free phones. As any digital software, phones also have something like trial or even freemium model. And how it works is you may have it installed on your computer legally, but still for more purposes, you have to go and buy the appropriate license. As an example, some of phones I already have on my Mac OS as a system phones are not actually free. Let's go to my phone book and choose computer in order to see only system phones. And as you see, I already have the full set of Avenue Next, a true masterpiece typeface created by Adrian Frutiger from Linotype, which is, by the way, one of the world's biggest and well-known type foundries. Now let's go and check it on myphones.com. And oh my God, it starts from $89. Now you know what I mean when I say Gilroy is not expensive. Let's try to buy their family package. And you see the desktop and web phone licenses are $900. But in case if I want to use it on my website and for the mocks of that website, I don't need a desktop license. So the price is $500. So my dear Apple haters, this overpriced and evil company just made me save about $400, which is approximately a little bit less than 20% of the whole MacBook Pro price. The other partly free phones go under the limited phone license. The owner company may share the phone for free, but still you cannot use it whatever you want because it may have some usage limitations. Getting back to Apple, the San Francisco and New York phones are a great example of it. As you see, we have no problem with hitting the download button, but if we check the license, let's see. You may use the Apple phones solely for creating mockups of user interfaces to be used in software products running on Apple's iOS or OS X operating systems as applicable. In other words, you cannot use it for your presentations, websites, etc. Only on the mocks of apps you design for Apple platforms. The other partly free phones I would like to highlight are Adobe phones. First of all, Adobe phones is a subscription library, which means you have to register in Adobe Creative Cloud in order to use them legally. And although they may seem free, they still have some limitations in usage. 
Let's go and check it. Can I use the phones to create a logo or other images? Yes. Can I embed the phones in a mobile or desktop applications I'm building? No. Okay, I'll put these links in the description and if you want to use Adobe phones, I highly recommend to read them, okay? As you see, they're not completely free. Also, you can come and buy them in myphones.com as you see, they are like starting from $35. That's it. As you see, nothing too complicated. Now you already know pretty much everything about the most frequently used font licenses. If you want to learn about all of them, like exclusive license, etc., I'll pop a link below. You can read it and be informed. As a conclusion, I want to say I tried type design a few years ago as a hobby. And what I can say is probably the hardest branch of graphic design. And I would even dare say the most important. You know, it's, it's impossible to imagine not only the design, but the whole world without typefaces. And you know, the process of the creation is not an easy thing. Even a huge type foundry sometimes need years and years to create a high quality typeface. And, you know, let's respect what these people do by observing the license requirements. Believe me, even the money you pay for a very expensive up license, it doesn't go to some evil millionaire with a cigar in his mouth. This all are fellow designers and they really deserve to be fairly paid. Okay, and we even need to support them. We even need to support mostly non-Latin type designers. And that's it. I'm saying it because, you know, throughout all the video I was mentioning troublemakers, not getting trouble. But no, let's first of all respect type designers and not get in trouble too. That's it, people. If you like the video, give it thumb up, press subscribe button, bell, and all the other stuff that vloggers are usually saying. And yeah, if you think this topic is important, help this video to spread, share it. I'm new to this vlogger thing, so yeah, I promise to do my best to record and publish a new video on every Tuesday. So see you in a week or two. Bye.